So um, I say in my commentary, of course, I know this is all kind of philosophical uh, in this discussion, but nevertheless, um, the truths are contained in the Bible, and we read this these concepts in the Bible, and we just kind of put philosophical terms on top of them. To be sure, I say the Bible illustrates that the Old Testament saints, and I mentioned this earlier, who were genuinely saved, had to have had the Spirit of Messiah in them due to the fact that they were saved by placing their faith in the Messiah to come, whereas we are saved by placing our faith in the Messiah who has already come. So that's really uh, the, the, the crux of the matter. If you believe that, that the Old Testament saints were saved a different way by placing their generic faith in God, then I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you have misunderstood the words of the Master. You've misunderstood the Gospel. You've misunderstood the, the, the whole thrust of God sending His Son to planet Earth in the first place. If there was another way, then why would Israel need to place their faith in Jesus? Israel's been proclaiming faith in God for 3,500 years or longer, right? Why do we need to witness to unsaved Jews if they've already got genuine salvation via their quote-unquote faith in God? Understand what I'm saying here? If generic faith in God was all you needed, then Messiah didn't need to die. His death was pointless. He didn't have to, to, to um, lose his life because the Jewish people already had eternal life. But no, that's not the Jesus I read about in the Gospels. Over and over again, and I'm closing with this, when I read about the Messiah and his mission to the Jewish people, he over and over um, pointed them to himself. Right? If you, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He's even willing to offend them with his parables and his illustrations and his demonstrations of power and his healings and his, and his associations with Gentiles and sinners and prostitutes. He was willing to offend Jewish leaders to get them to understand that he was the exclusive truth that God the Father was sending into the world. He was the true light. He was the true bread come down from heaven. There was no other way for God to reconcile men to himself except through the Son of God. The sacrifice that Jesus would have to make. If there was another way, he even prayed to the Father, if it's possible to take this cup from me, Father, do it. But what did he say? Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. There is no other way. Generic faith in God doesn't cut it. It's a great starting point. Don't get me wrong. I applaud the Jewish, the religious Jewish effort to seek God and to um, um, uh, turn yourself to God, to orient your, 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 your mind and your heart towards God's ways. But in the end, you've got to contend with this man, Jesus. And so I say in my um, uh, commentary in this closing paragraph, eternal salvation is, of course, exclusive to placing one's faith in in the Messiah, Yeshua. You can't be saved through your ethnicity. You can't be saved by your good works. You can't be saved by the family you're born into. It doesn't matter if you're born with a Christian mother and father, father and mother. That's good. That's a great place to start. And that's a good feature to have as a child. But it doesn't guarantee salvation. Being baptized as an infant. I'm sorry, that's not eternal salvation either. That's not the way that you are to, to come into the family of God uh, on a permanent basis. Um, conversion to Judaism, speaking of those in Paul's day, from Gentile to Jew. That's not eternal salvation. doesn't work that way. So I say in my commentary, uh, and this type of salvation, this exclusive um, uh, salvation through Yeshua, surely spans the difference from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Right? You have to recall, um, as you're studying the Bible, and I'm closing again, recall John 14, 6, and I alluded to this, where Jesus categorically states that he is, quote, the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except 
through me. Those are the words of the master. I didn't make that up. That's not an extra insert uh, from the book of As Isaiah or the, the from the, the book of Ses- Second Hesitations or something like that. That's straight gospel, straight from John, straight from the Lord's mouth. I didn't make it up. If you have a problem with that exclusive aspect of the gospel, if it if it if it disrupts your your um, political perspective to teach that Jesus is the exclusive means of salvation and that all these other false messiahs and Buddhas and Krishnas and 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 uh, you know spiritual gurus and all that stuff, those guys aren't going to cut it. You know all the other Joseph Smiths and Muhammads out there, those guys are false messiahs. If if that upsets your your uh, political apple cart, then I'm sorry. Jesus said it best, and Jesus is the only one who can say this because he is the only one who has this exclusive access to the Father, and he is the only one who can draw us to himself. I say in closing, his truth statement must be efficacious in both directions of what sci-fi buffs like myself would call the space-time continuum, right? If we were to overlay that particular science, sci-fi model on top of the Bible. Um, Jesus' salvation cuts both ways uh, if we were talking about time travel. And that's going to do it for exploring the Shema, discussions on the issues of Trinity.